Okay, so guys, uh, now we're gonna talk about trading psychology. Session number three. So on trading psychology, you know, like, I don't wanna lie to you guys, we can't kill fear. We can, some of us may be failing to be disciplined and all of those things, but we can give you an advice how to fight it because at the end of the day, you need to fight those certain things. Simple no one will be charged, understand? So we have what we call trading psychology. Trading psychology. So, first thing first that you have to have it's money management. I like this part. The reason I like this part is that money management is not money that it's in your account. That's why I like this count. This part because this is the money that's not in your in your account. So don't claim that when you talk about money management, you're gonna talk about money that it's in your account. This is not your money. Once you deposit the money, it's the market money. So once you make peace with that, that's when you get to understand that this is not your money. You understand? This is not your money. Shall I do something quick? So this is not your money, this is the market money. But now you need to participate at the end of the day in order for you to regain your money with proper profit. Understand? So what is it that you have to do? You have to have plans and everything. So now we're going to talk about money management. Money management is how you're going to save your money. Not because you made 2K, now you have the whole money in the world. There's a lot of money to the market. You need to fight all that money understand so first thing first is money in the money management so my money management is simple once i make okay i put it into my savings account so you come up with your own plan how you're gonna manage your money money management secondly when you start applying your risk management risk management So here I'm going to say rules so that you can understand. And don't forget, money management rules. How are you going to handle your cash? A lot of, lot of cash, guys. It's easy to say when I have one million, I'll buy houses. Once you start having one million and you see that it doesn't afford houses, it actually afford an apartment. That's when you see that now you need to come up with a plan in order for you to afford a house. You understand? So having money, it's not simple and it's not easy. You'll wish that if you are broke again, understand? But at the end of the day, you need to live with that, push with that. So don't think like having money will make peace into your life. Remember, other people, they don't have money. They will be depending on you and you'll be working for them. You'll be stressing alone. They don't care if today you're stressed or whatever. They'll be looking for money. So how are you going to manage all those things? Because obviously they're going to affect your work. You're not driven to your family. You want to give everyone, you want to see everyone eat. But how are you going to manage those kind of situations? You understand those type of money management. The four codes of life. You don't do, you know, once you have money, you experience yourself having a lot of debt. <coughs> understand? You not having like a lot of debt, like 
banks start approaching you because they need interest. Remember, banks, they loan from central banks. So it means banks, they don't have money. They loan from central banks in order for you to be loaned. And then you're going to be paying the interest. They're going to be paying the central banks. So at the end of the day, actually, you are the one who's having the money, but you don't realize. So there's positive loans. There's negative loan. Don't make negative loans. Obviously, you will make negative loan. Buying For myself, buying a car with finance and negative loan, what am I benefiting from that? But at the end of the day, for my business and profile, it's beneficiary. But for, from someone, you need to come up with things which are going to benefit you in life. You understand? So there's the four codes of life. If you want to know four codes of life, search it on the internet. Money management, such as your internet, those are the financial advices. <clears throat> so number four, is trading commitment. This thing, it's hard if you're not com committed. Because you know what I have realized about trading last year and this year? This year, I don't look at the market the whole day. Last year, I used to lock myself into the room. I say, I'm going to come up from this room where I know how to trade perfectly like other traders. And I did that and I managed. But now I don't have time to be locking myself into the room. I need to enjoy my profits, you understand? So I learned how to come out from the room and manage to trade. So first thing first, you need to lock yourself, understand everything in the, once you start understanding the structure of the market, everything starts becoming easy. Determine your trading style. Every mentor has his own trading style. I can't trade like other mentors, but <laughs> you understand. So even yourself, you can't trade like me, but from what I give you, you can come up with your trading style, time. You understand? Maybe improve my strategies. That is why we give our strategies so that you guys can improve our strategies. Determine your own trading style matters as well. Overcoming fear. In my life, I don't like saying that we need to kill it. We need to overcome it. We need fear into our life. Most of the people feel like fear is the only thing that will, will actually stop them from making, let's say money, because everyone want to make money. They'd be like, oh man, I, I have fear. The problem is that, the problem is it's not that you have fear. The problem, you don't overcome your fear. How are you going to overcome your fear? First thing first, you need to have three rules while you enter a trade. Three rules. <laughs> and three rules why you shouldn't enter the trade actually three rules why you exit the trade guys i'm not writing this and then you find that they enter the side and then they come out this side you understand three rules why you enter a trade and three rules why you exit a trade actually here it's exit exit a trade so it's more important to to exit with strategy not just exit because you see blue and red red and blue doesn't mean anything you just on the colors you know sometimes you should just change the colors and put the blue one on the red and then the red one on the blue so that you, you know that this one they don't mean anything the only thing that means something is the strategy once you're in red you want to escape once you're in blue you want to escape you're excited you are here no, you don't need to kill fear. You know, like, if you were to check, now, probably I'll give illustration about school. When you're at school and you're about to write an exam, if you are not afraid to fail that exam, you'll never pass it. You know why? Because you can't study. You understand? You can never study because you're not afraid to fail that test. But once you start having fear on it, you don't want to fail. That's when you're going to study and then you're going to pass the test. So actually fear drives a person. For me to say a successful trader has to have fear and a lot of fear like a newbie. Newbie has a fear of starting. You have fear of losing. There's a difference there. Once you start, he has fear of losing 500. You have fear of losing 100,000. So the more you grow, the more you gain fear. There's no way you're going to lose fear because at the end of the day, you want more money, you want to make more cash. 
you don't fund less you fund more you always own you want to trade every day you don't want to stop you already understand the market so don't try to kill things that you can never kill there is no medicine to kill fear so discipline so this one i just call it discipline so that you shouldn't forget it i'll write it again like i said i don't want to be typing here and then you find that you take this thing this side and then they get out this other side because at the end of the day i'm trying to help you i know most of the people just want to hit the chart but i don't see any point of hitting the chart now we need to talk about these things even though we are afraid to know that Ninja is saying the truth. You know, I've been I've been failing this day, but I'll still fail. Why is he wasting his time? I'll waste my time until you pass this day. You need a trading coach. Okay, I didn't have a trading coach and I still don't have one. Do I need one? Nah, I don't think I need one. Do you think you need one? Are you brave enough? Are you are you are you there to wait for two years and then achieve your, your success after two years? No, you're not ready. You just want to achieve it now in three months. So you need a coach. There are people which I'm coaching a lot of people. Maybe it's actually maybe a thousand of people. I don't even know. Some I just talked to on Instagram, coaching them, you know. So you need you need a coach though. You need a coach. Actually, I can say during my come up, Izzy was my coach, but now he's no longer my coach because I'm not choosing anything that it, it's his. So Actually, during the process, you need a coach so that you can understand. Not someone which will give you food, but teach you how to fish so that next time you can fish for your family. So, so that's how it is, guys. That's how it is. Those are the most things which you need on psychology. So once you have these things, risk management, money management, focus of life, trading commitment, determine your trading style, overcoming fear, three rules, why you trade, why you enter three rules, why you discipline and trading coach will understand what is it that you're going to. If you don't understand these things, the market will always kick you. You know, I attended Isaac class. It was a three-day session for free. I went for the first session. They didn't plot the chart. They talked about the four code, money management, risk management, psychology. And I was like, these things are the things which i never been taught. So I didn't go to the second session and the first session because I already got what I wanted. There's a lot that I learned. So this is what I'm giving to the people so that you don't, you don't meet. If we can hit the chart now, you'll never understand these things. These are the things which you have to, you, you know, you're going to play an account well, you know the direction. Because you don't have discipline. You just enter trade, everything. So now we're going to talk about price section. What is a price section? So actually a price section is something that actually plot from structures to give us a direction. It can be patterns, can be indicators, can be systems, it can be trading plan, everything that you come up with, it's a pure price section. System, if you didn't know, people are busy saying a system better than a pure price section. What is a system? Because system, it's pure price section. It's actually plotting what pure price section plots, a trend, it's pure price section. Everything, there's just that I feel like it plots in valid trend. That's how I feel because I feel like an indicator is actually uh, defined from waves. Uh, the other thing, it's a rejection. They don't, they don't, indicators don't see rejection. They don't. So that's what you have to do. Use pure price section on your own head. You, you can't be better than a robot because you are the only one who made the robot. You understand? So Ellen might say in the future, robots will be better than people but jack ma will say robots can never be better than people because at the end of the day a, a person can make a robot but a robot can make a person so it can never be so use pure price section on your own there's nothing called the robot it's the future the robot easy money Nothing like that. Just use pure, pure price section. Use your own hard work. You'll see this thing will pay off. Most of these mentors are using price section and then they make money from the robot. The robot is not hard to, to teach. If I was teaching you guys a robot now, I could have finished everything that I was talking about now. Understand? 
but I don't care. I'll waste my time checking about everything so that you can know. So from from your your pure price section, what you have to most focus on it's a chart pattern. You go you're gonna ask uh any student now do you know what is an impulse and a correction a student says he doesn't know what is it that builds everything into the market it's an impulse and a correction so if you don't know what is it that you know i know support and resistance support and resistance where you plot it i plot it downside the double bottom what is it that formed the double bottom it's a correction and an impulse and correction and impulse the reversal correction and impulse on the double bottom so everything into the market is continuation. Every pattern, every pattern, there's continuation pattern, there's reversal patterns. So reversal pattern is like rising wedge. It's an impulse correction, impulse. There is no way it will create an impulse and a correction. You understand? It can be a reversal one or a continuation one. So a person says he doesn't know something that is always on the market. So first thing first, we're going to talk about a continuation pattern so continue a continuation pattern it's your it's a correction and impulse so correction and impulse can come diagonally or horizontally depending on how the market is so this is a type of correction and impulse so i always say the shape of the market when i'm like shape of the market the shape the shape the shape the shape the shape the shape is something that you see during the process, once you see the shape of the market, you understand that there is no way I can fall. I already have this kind of shape. So what type of shape? Let's say you have a, an impulse move like this and a person will sell once he has like this because he doesn't know what is it for, what he's actually doing. And then let's say you have something like this. I always say, once the market start pushing to the top, enter any entry here. Today we entered an entry somewhere here during NFP. Why? Because we had a correction and impulse. But you guys didn't see because you're not focused. But if you were to, to be focused, you could have seen everything. So the market moves impulse, correction, and impulse. It can be a reversal one or a continuation one. So I'll do the horizontal one here. Today, guys, you'll understand this thing by force. You see? So... Remember, you can get your entry point once it breaks out and throws it outside here. You can get your entry point here, but you're taught by me. You get your entry point here once you have a confirmation of a, a pin bar somewhere here. You enter in. You monitor this thing. You're going to kill gold from today. Gold. Uh, you know, you're going to kill gold, Nasdaq, USDT, everything. If you don't see any correction, you, know, you are my student. If you don't see correction, you don't enter any trade. But if you see correction, you enter trade. So let's be fair. That's your first rule. You need to be seeing correction. Everything, hence I said it as a correction. So your entry point can be here or here. But let's say it's here. What I like about early entry points is that my stop loss becomes short than long. Because if you were to enter there, your stop loss has to be here. Will you, you can't survive this pressure and no, it won't. So here's your SL. And then your take profit is actually equivalent to this point. Then you take your equivalent. And then, boom, the market hits you with the impulse move. What I like about impulse move, a retest is not mostly guaranteed. Understand? It's not mostly guaranteed. Let me check something quick. Okay, let me add up data. Guys, let me add up data. So this is actually a correction and impulse. So correction and impulse is the only thing that but there are most mentors which I know they trade correction and impulse. Like guys, you need to know, am I using sub? I use everything. If you tell me about impulse and correction, I'm gonna sit down and learn it because I know that you are successful because of it. You understand? So I'm using correction and impulse as well. Today I used it. Yesterday I used it. This week I've been using it. Hence, I updated a YouTube channel and talk about correction. But I didn't explain like I'm explaining now here. You understand? There's a difference between a YouTube and here. So this is your correction and an impulse movement. Simple. Now we're going to go to the chart. You want to see what I'm actually talking about. This is my chart. 
Okay, I'm on German 30. I'm not gonna go to any time frame here. I'm gonna anyone that I pick, I stick to it. So here, let's go to a higher time frame, 60 minutes, because this is not a small hour. Already you see it. This is our impulse move here. I want to make this thing big so that all of us can see it. Let me make it like this, exactly my point. This is what I wanted. You can see now, simple thing. So now you can't be asking me, where will the market go on Monday on German date? What do you want? What do you want? You see, this is a correction. We're playing like the market, how it's playing, you understand? So, so that you can understand what is it that I'm exactly talking about. So here we have our correction here. Then we have our correction this side. And then what I believe that is that the market can keep on pushing. But at the end of the day, if it reversed here, it has to give me more momentum. So actually this part, it has to come back here. Still, the market moves on correction and impulse. You understand? If you are listening to me when I was teaching, you understand that let me use this pencil because I'm gonna be quicker. Correction and impulse. Impulse, you understand? Impulse, correction, impulse movement. Come on guys, this thing is simple. This thing is so simple. We can have a major impulse, impulse movement, correction, impulse. So some of you now saying, oh, 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 you understand? Let me go to H4 because I can see this impulse is not actually here. The one I'm going to create now. The market moves impulse and correction. Impulse, correction, and impulse movement. Simple. Even if when we're going down, guys, even if we're going down, it's the same story. This, this was impulse and correction. Impulse, correction. Impulse movement, correction, impulse. Okay, let me remove this one. Even if when we're going down, it's the same thing. Impulse, correction, impulse movement. It pays. So if you don't know that the market moves impulse and correction, you won't be patient. You can wait three days for the market to create a proper correction and you enter a proper increase. Simple. Okay, what I said, they are said after when it breaks out, you do what you enter your entry. So let's see what I was talking about. I'm going to remove every trend here. You draw a trend from this point to this point. Tough. When it breaks out, closes outside, sold. We draw another trend here. Breakout, close outside, sold. We draw another trend here in the correction. Breakout, close outside, sold. Another correction. Breakout, close outside, bought. Another one here. <laughs> Breakout, close outside, Board. Breakout closes outside board. So the reason of the market closing outside and buying is because you need to understand one thing into the market. The market, it has walls, it has ceiling, it has floors. If I break a wall, there is no way I can not go to the other side. But if if we were throwing uh what is this uh a rubber ball right? and then it breaks the ceiling and passes. There's 90% chances that it might bounce on top of the ceiling and never come back from the point where it have 
uh, going through you understand and then once it goes to that ceiling it does what it bounces because it no longer have that momentum that it got from the bottom so what i say is that if you break support or diagonal support that thing eventually turn into a resistant if it's a retest yes we need to retest but we can never pass simple as a b c d so we're going to go to the other aspect again okay. we remove everything simple thing impulse correction movement and an impulse movement this is a correction impulse correction impulse even today we had a correction here and an impulse so how do you actually identify an impulse from the previous movement that's how you're going to identify your impulse and a correction you can see impulse correction during the correction that's when a lot of people lose once they see a trend that's when they be like oh man we're just going down the end no relax let the market create what is it that it want to create now the market it's not creating anything it's just buying but if it's keep on creating the correction you see there's an impulse here we're going to get an impulse movement there's no way we'll end unless if we already created another pattern of reversal So now we go back to the chart. So the other chart pattern we talked about the correction and impulse now we're going to talk about a double bottom. So I'm gonna do it like this, and then, hence I said every pattern is created by a correction and impulse. It can be a reversal or a continuation. So during this process here, we can technically get something like correction here. Let me create it so you guys can see to it. We get something like this. The market start pushing to the top, and then some of you might say the market will continue by. You understand? But at the end of the day, the market sells, and then when it sells here, we have another correction and impasse here. Let's create it here. So this is a reversal trend. So how can you see a, a reversal? correction and impulse the only way you can see a reversal correction and impulse movement it's when you are at your support that's when you create your double bottom simple okay so it seems like we have 40 minutes left i mean 10 minutes left then we're going to send another link let's finish up this one let's wrap up the double bottom so double bottom touches here goes to the top here and then come back again and touches here i like early entries why because i know i'm going to put my stop loss on a short time here in most cases the market may come here reject make sure that you wait for rejection first and then give you a proper buy if there's no rejection you don't enter and then your tp will be Here, Ooh, the market will do this. Simple. TP, you see, I didn't talk about any neckline, so you didn't teach by me when you're gonna talk about necklines. Why I say enter it safe because there's neckline at the end of the day. Once you break the neckline, you can never come back. Oh, that's your entry here. It's your SL. It's your stop loss. Simple. We go to the chart. Wanna see the double bottom? The reason I don't like talking about a neckline. This could be my neckline. Check where the market reverse. Blow your account, then you be saying things they don't like. They work. How do you use them? Method. There's a double bottom here.
simple. So when I have to push you a smaller time frame like M8, so that we can give you other towel bottom so that you can see. The other one is here. Towel bottom. So in most cases, we have double bottom, major double bottom, double tops. Even here, this is sort of like a double bottom. We have a diagonal double bottom. Let me use this one so that I can be quick. I'll put home here. Diagonal towel top. So you can see the correction and impulse, obviously. Yeah, let me end here. So the last point, it's an head and shoulder. So a head and shoulder, guys, as well. It's a reversal pattern. It's also created by a impasse and a correction. So I'm going to show you how. So this one is an inverse head and shoulder. Uh, here, let me create. So at this certain point, let's say it's an impulse movement. At the end of the day, it creates correction, and then it creates impulse movement again. Understand? So it come back and then comes to the top, then impulse movement creates a correction. So whatever happened in the past shall happen in the future, bigger and better. So in most cases, you find this thing here, it's a trend, it's a bigger correction. And then here you find that there's your correction. If you're too vigilant, you can see that. And then from this point, you enter trade here after rejection, you put your stop loss here. This is a take profit. TP, entry, Stop loss. Simple. Guys, don't make this thing hard. This is just a correction and impulse movement. Push to the top. After the, the market breaks the major trend, the market start creating an impulse and correction, impulse, correction, impulse, and correction. So guys, I'm going to end this session, and then we're going to come back on another session.